Today we're off to Maine. I thought I'd have a go at the Marshall Point Museum Lighthouse. It's actually been featured in the Forrest Gump movie. That's where you may have seen it. I think the thing that I love about it most is it's so accessible. It's one of those scenes that doesn't kind of step on itself and get in its way, trying to be too flashy, too amazing, too wonderful. It's just got great classic shapes and I love how it holds the light. And I think it really does bring out the essence of Maine for me. Let's see how I go. Okay, let's get some of these lines in. Fine with um, a lot of buildings, whether it's a barn or a, an old shed or even a building. Getting that perspective, sometimes it can actually uh, be a little too dramatic and I'll actually alter that so that it's not going to run the eye downhill that direction too fast, too much. That was a little mistake. Never feel, never fear sort of making a little mistake with oils. We can always just blast him out. And that's what I like to do. If in doubt, just rub it out. So here we come with plenty of French ultramarine, a little bit of alizarin, yellow ochre, and quite a bit of white. Notice that I'm not worrying too much about where those windows are. It's always better to think of the, the big shapes or the biggest shapes first and just see how they're going. Because if we don't have them working, no fancy brushwork or even fancy wonderful tonal values will be able to save us. Got to get those big shapes in the right place or, or, as, or as good as possible in the right place. It's quite interesting how some regions of the world can really grab your attention or your imagination. Because I have to admit, I, my first trip to Maine, I kind of was told how it was one of the best painting places in the world and and I thought, oh boy, you'll be able, you'll just walk outside and trip over a good painting. But that's not quite how things work. But I think the, it was one of those places that I was, I always enjoyed going to, but it, as to how to paint it, it just grew and grew and I learnt to understand the nuances more. And so there's some marvellous little car shadows there. And there's a, just a little shrub there. So we want to get that nice dark in first. Sometimes we've got to watch the outline of the building up against kind of a fairly blank sky because sometimes that can be a little, just a little too sharp and a little too coarse. But I think I'll definitely get a nice sharp edge or a nice bit of light on the front of the building. I think that's fairly imperative uh, to show where the light's coming from and ultimately where the light's going to via the shadow. Even though I decided to leave that little half light, I did give it a go on the uh, vertical wall, that big long wall where the two windows are. There is actually a little half light there and it just looked a little as if it was running the eye a little too quickly into the painting. So there'll be plenty of King's Blue with a little bit of Ultra Blue into here, tiny little bit of Alizarin as well. Sometimes I don't really like to get in and do the foliage too soon because it's, especially in that mid distance and being some big trees, it's so easy to overwork it. But we got to bite the bullet at some stage and see how we go. And there's a little figure which I decided to leave out 
there's a little figure on the sort of bottom right hand side. Because there's nothing like sort of uh, sort of flying by the city of pants, sort of bringing in things and ideas that we sometimes didn't think of. Even though with most paintings, I kind of like to know how the painting's going to go, how it's going to finish, you know, at least 90% of it. But there's always that last five, maybe uh, 10% that really uh, does uh, need to uh, come through, come to life in that painting process. That's sort of the, the adapting to the situation. And almost, we, we almost, sorry, need uh, to have a plan B and C sometimes. There's a slight tonal change between the top part of the roof and that lower part. So I'll just bring in some of that sort of broken light. Without overdoing it, I'm always a little bit of a stickler for not overworking rooftops. Because I believe that it's almost like a a bit of foliage, even though this is green, but it could be orange. It's a device to tie the left hand and the right hand end of the building. And normally that's what I do with foliage. It's more about tying shapes together. And it's the lights, the darks that we really do want the uh, viewer to look at. So that's why I'm uh, aiming to simplify it and aiming not to sort of get in its way too much. So sometimes people will ask me how to sort of simplify and I think it is sometimes choosing areas like the that wall that's in full shadow just behind that shrub. If I were to have overworked that, put heaps of uh, the horizontal weatherboards in and shadows and highlights and half lights, can be really easy to to sort of overdo it and especially with this one we've got the rocks in the foreground they were quite tricky because they're in sort of full light and sometimes I think most shapes are a little easier to paint when they're in sort of a half light where or a two-thirds light and one-third shadow or vice versa where this is almost sort of 95 percent light it's always a little hard just to get that shape and form of the rock. But as I'm painting this, I'm kind of thinking, you know what? Um, I normally do like to introduce something. So I'm thinking a figure in this mid distance will really work well, um, but that may be something I'll do later. Well, that was really fantastic. The one thing with this type of building and white colored buildings is we need to think of it as one big shadow and then what I like to do is wipe out where the light's going to go because without that reflective light from the sky from the ground it doesn't really resonate that's one of my best tips I could ever give you for painting white colored buildings thanks for watching all the best bye for now